Um, another tactic that you'll find with covert narcissists, victimized narcissists, especially if uh, they lean submissive, is comparing. Because this is very passive aggressive in a very sneaky way to get more security in the dynamic. If we can make the dominant feel insecure, we feel more secure. It's twisted, but that's the logic. And so comparing is a very sneaky, passive aggressive way to do that. Oh, really? You like that toy? My old Dom preferred this toy. Do you mind if we play like this instead? I once had a dominant that did this and I actually prefer it that way. It, and those are very obvious because I'm trying to make it obvious. And they exist so that the dominant will go, am I not doing it right? Am I not dominant enough? Am I not doing it enough? And it's, it's so the dominant will start second guessing themselves, doubting themselves, questioning their leadership, their ability to be dominant. And it's a way to flip the sense of power or security in the submissive's favor. So this is a little different than the comparison. The goal is the same. We're trying to wear down the dominant or the victim, uh, make them question themselves, feel less powerful, all of that. But inciting insecurity is doing things intentionally to make the dominant jealous. So whether that is paying attention to another dominant, um, sharing a post from another dominant, um, calling another dominant honorifics or whatever, asking if or hinting about playing with another dominant, things like that, where it's a very strategic way of bringing down the dominant, bringing down the victim, so that the abuser, in this case, the victimized or covert narcissist, feels more powerful, more in control. Because here's the thing, it's really all about control. It's, I feel so powerless and insecure and needy. I have to get this supply of what I need from somewhere. But if you feel empowered and secure, you could leave me. So I have to make sure, in order to save my supply, I have to make sure that you feel so weak and confused and belittled and broken down without actually defining it that way that you will stay with me and let me feed off of you as my narcissistic supply. That is the logic of a narcissist. Uh, the next tactic that you'll find is raising the bar. Raising the bar. Now, this serves two purposes. Number one, it is, again, reinforcing the to the dominant or to the victim, but in this case, the dominant, that you're not enough. You're not enough. You're not dominant enough. You're not kinky enough. You're not playing with me enough. You're not playing with me intense enough. It's this raising the bar makes the victim feel, I can't ever succeed. I'm never good enough. So it wears down the victim in that way. But the secondary purpose for raising the bar is really also just a test. It's a, I. Even though you, the dominant, have proven that you're safe, I feel so unsafe in my own self, in my own experience. I have to constantly test you to make sure that you will jump through all of these hoops to prove to me that you love me, to prove to me that you want me. So again, manipulative and very, very, very destructive. The sixth tactic. Shame shifting, shame shifting. This uh, is uh, from Melanie Tonya Evans, and she does a lot of work around narcissism. And she says one of the most insane and devastating parts of narcissistic abuse is the projection tactics that narcissists use. Narcissists quite simply accuse you of all the things that they do themselves. So that's essentially shame shifting. A narcissist will blame you for not forgiving them and point you out to be the problem. That, my dear, is strategic and one of the more common tactics of the narcissist. What is known as shame shifting is the narcissist will do anything to target you as the problem privately, publicly, and implicitly. 
So essentially, shame shifting, this tactic is when the, the abuser, in this case, the victimized narcissist, the covert narcissist, whatever, can't face what they're doing. They're not doing anything wrong. So if there is an issue in the dynamic, it can't be their fault. It has to be your fault. It has to be the victim's fault. In this case, the dominant. And so it's a lot of projection. And it literally is, I can't take the focus of this being my problem. I can't, no, 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 because I will spiral. Just, I will lose myself in shame. And narcissists cannot go there. They cannot go there. So they literally shift it, and it's your problem now. No accountability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is shame shifting. And then forced forgiveness is, you know, when all else fails, and especially for question number four, you know, how do you find the emotional and mental strength to leave? A really, like, last-ditch effort of a covert or victimized narcissist is forced forgiveness. It's, hey, we're all just human. You're not going to forgive me now? It's, it's, that, it's that you don't care about me. You don't love me. You don't want me. I feel abandoned by your boundary setting. And since I believe you're responsible for me feeling good instead of me dealing with my own feelings of disappointment or abandonment, I'll guilt trip you unconsciously until you give in. Force forgiveness could sound a couple of ways. Are you going to punish me forever? Are you seriously bringing this up again? God wouldn't want you to hold this over my head. If I'm so bad, then leave. I forgave you when you did da 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 da, so you need to forgive me. You only remember the bad things I do for you. Those kinds of messages, those are all forced forgiveness. Childhood flashbacks, oof, okay. So we had some narcissistic uh, parental situations. Reminds me a lot of your ex. Just sent me, I know, I know, uh-huh, yes. And so you all are feeling like you all are getting activated a little bit and triggered a little bit, and I apologize. That is how deep and insidious this kind of abuse is. But these people right here in the chat are going, this happened to me when I was a child, this happened with my ex, and it's still activating them. Because it's that level of, it's gaslighting, it's minimization, it's denying that the victim was actually victimized. Okay? Thank goodness I never have to deal with that again. Yes, yes. Okay, it's taking, it's taking your empathy and it's weaponizing your empathy. That's what narcissists do. They weaponize your empathy. And then when you give and you give and you, em you empathize and you empathize and then you're done because they've sucked the soul out of you, then you're the bad guy for, no, for not having any empathy anymore. Mm -hmm.